Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Rainforest Flora. Today we're going to talk about the miniature subgenus of Tillandsia, a rather arcane subject for most people because most people, frankly, are only interested in what the plants look like and how big they are in their shape. But there is a subgenus in the genus of Tillandsia that is composed of the miniature species. And for people who don't have space, for people who can appreciate great shape on a small scale, these are some of the most beautiful and interesting plants. And interestingly, they are also arguably the most successful of the subgenera of Tillandsia because they have the greatest range of distribution and the greatest numbers. And this is because, being small, they can grow in many different kinds of places. If you're a great big Tillandsia, you, there are a lot of places you can't grow. But the little guys, they can attach to nooks and crannies. They can be in many different places. All the different forms of Spanish moss, for instance, are in the subgenus Diaphoranthema. So today, I'm going to show you just a few of the subgenus Diaphoranthema species and subspecies. And, and then we can go <laughs> from there, right? We'll talk next time after that. All right, so here we go. The first one I'm going to show you it's called Tillandsia pedicillata. It is somewhat coalescent and growing on a stem. Many leaves densely bunched and forming a round cylindrical polystichus um, plant. And it's similar to many others. For instance, this next one is Tillandsia tricholepis. Tillandsia tricholepis is a different color. The leaves are more spreading and separate than those of Pedicillata. And then the next one is called Tillandsia brioetis. Brioetis has been changed to something else and I don't remember what the name of it is, but most people in the world that know these plants know this is Tillandsia brioetis. And you can see that the leaves are very, very tightly grouped over the leaves above them. That's called imbricate in botanical terms. They're very imbricate, and it's a very smooth cylinder of a very small Tillandsia. The next one is a very, very tiny little guy. This is called Tillandsia varescens. It's very rare and very beautiful. It can get about twice this size, but that's it. You can see the tip of my finger here. It's a very small growing species, and it grows into a very dense little bunch. Then we go up to a larger form of a subgenus Tiaferanthema that I'm not sure what this one is. Uh, I don't know everything. <laughs> and uh, this one has relatively soft leaves with a, a, a good amount of space between each leaf, as you can see here. It's, uh, it may be a form of Tillandsia capillaris, but capillaris normally has more stiff leaves. This next one is Tillandsia Capillaris variety varescens has a lot of space between each leaf and is very attractive. Um, people like this one a lot. It, it will grow hanging down and turn around and curve up. The next one is another form of Capillaris. Many, many forms of Capillaris. And this one has thicker, more fleshy leaves and the leaves are closer together than they are for Capillaris variety varescens. Next is a species called, in Latin it's Andicola, and in English it would be Andicola. And these leaves are very stiff and quite a bit larger than the other forms of, uh, that we just saw of Capillaris. And the one after this is called Tillandsia mollis. And Tillandsia mollis has very white, uh, round, uh, terete is the botanical term, uh, very round leaves and a very dense covering of in, in the botanical closely oppressed. That means that the trichomes are very close together. The white scales on the leaves that make it white and fuzzy are very close together and very parallel. The, the wings of them are very parallel to the leaf surface so that uh, it's very, very smooth. And mollusks, there's a lot of demand for mollusks. It's very rare. Then we have Tillandsia loliacea. This is a clump that's just getting ready to bloom. And 
you can see these thin flower spikes that it has and it's characteristic of subgenus Diaphorantuma that all of the flowers in this subgenus are very small and inconspicuous and they're called cleistogamous and cleistogamous means that they are self-pollinating so unlike most of the others, all of the others that are pollinated by moths or hummingbirds uh, or butterflies, these, the flowers don't open. They stay closed and they're self-pollinating. And that means that you don't get the genetic diversity that you do when you have two separate plants crossing and the genetic material, just like people crossing and making a new plant, you have the same genetic makeup for all the plants all the way down the line. But the positive side of that is every seed pod uh, produces seeds. They produce many, many seeds that blow and, and they just multiply and they, they found new populations in other places. And so in today's world, they are spreading. They are dispersing more and more all the time. The care of the plants in subgenus Diaphorantuma, the miniature Tillandsias, is often a little bit different than many of the other Tillandsias because the plants are much smaller, they don't have a lot of leaf mass, they're um, more difficult to see because they are on a small scale. Most of them, you give them the same conditions of bright light, you water them weekly or bi-weekly, but make sure they get air. Because they're small, if they get wet and they're in the house and they stay wet, they can rot more quickly than many of the others. So, that's that, and I wanted to show you, this is a piece of grape wood with a bunch of uh, Brioetus on it, and they've been growing, and you see they kind of hang down, and as a scale reference, and because he's on there anyway, this is a beautiful specimen of Tillandsia ionantha variety stricta, and it's probably two and a half to three inches in diameter and height, so you can see how much bigger it is than all these beautiful little Tillandsia brioides. Okay, we're going to talk about some more of the species in subgenus Diaphorantuma. These we have mounted in a more natural setting on a rock face. Uh, they're called saxicoles or lithophytes when they grow on rocks. And here we have a group, a beautiful group of Tillandsia tenebra. And you can see how thick and succulent the leaves are. This plant is disticus, it grows flat. It doesn't grow, you know, with leaves going out in all directions. The individual plants are flat. They've been on there for about five years, starting as one plant, and now it's formed this beautiful clump. And you can see the flower spikes. Uh, this one has a seed pod on it. And uh, it's an easy one to grow, beautiful plant. And it's a trichalepis. Another, and I talked about this uh, earlier, but you can see these nice clumps growing on this piece of uh, choya cactus, and they too have uh, seed pods at the end of the uh, inflorescences there. And there, there will only be two or three seeds in each one of those seed pods. You can see how tiny they are. And then over here we have another form of Coppolaris. I have no idea which form this one is, but it's grown into a beautiful little clump it has one coming into bloom right here, and it has some with seed pods on them. Again, with one or two seeds in the inside of those pods, not a lot of seeds. And I think that's about, oh, here's one over here. Uh, this is Tillandsia isoides, and it has a bigger seed pod. So this might have five or seven seeds in it, but this has been glued onto the rock with a tilly tacker and it has uh, two mature plants and a couple of offsets coming up, but another beautiful miniature species in subgenus Tillandsia. I wanted to show you also a um, picture in the book. This is Tillandsia 2, and there's a picture in here of the subgenus Tillandsia. And this is the family tree of Tillandsia. And this is the subgenus over here of Diaphorantuma. So there is a description of the, uh, of the flowers, which is what separates the subgenera and the species and the genus, the genera, and all of that. Um, 
and you can see that the flowers are different in each subgenus. So, that's it for today. Maybe we'll do another session one of these days on the subgenus Diaphorantuma because there are many, many really interesting miniature species. And have a wonderful day and weekend. Paul, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. What's your website? Oh, www.rainforestflora.com. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.